Hello there, I'm Mr. Sebastian, here to talk to you about summarizing. When is the last time that you had to create a summary? You might think of summarizing as something you only do at school, when you write things like book reports, but I bet you use this skill more than you realize. Have you ever told a friend what happened on a TV show or explained the plot of a blockbuster movie? Did you focus on the main plot points and the most important details? If so, you got it. That was a summary. When you summarize a text or a TV show or movie, you determine the most important ideas and then organize them in a meaningful way, and you leave out unimportant or non-essential details. If you wanted to summarize the plot of a movie, you would introduce all the main characters and explain the crucial points in the plot. You would definitely include, spoiler alert, how the superhero saves the day at the end. And while you might describe a major battle in the film, you probably wouldn't mention what kind of cereal the hero has for breakfast. Minor, unimportant details like that don't belong in a summary. So, what exactly makes a good summary? Summaries should be short and focused. They're written in your own words and contain the central or main ideas of the text. They also include essential supporting details and keywords that the author uses, and they're shorter than the original text. What's not included in a summary? Your opinion, minor details in the text, and information not found in the text, such as connections you've made to what you read. Of course, some forms of writing do include your opinion, like a book or movie review and it's a good idea to make connections to the text while you read, but neither of those things belong in a summary. A summary should contain only information the author included in the text. Also, note that a summary is different from a paraphrase. Even though you use your own words in a summary, summarizing is not the same thing as paraphrasing. When you paraphrase a passage, you restate it in your own words without leaving out any information. By contrast, Summary leaves out a lot of details. Now that we have a good idea of what a summary should and shouldn't contain, let's look at a passage from an article and then evaluate a summary of the passage together. The passage is from an article about spicy foods called hot stuff. Chili peppers are also known as chilies. They are fruits that grow on pepper plants. There is a natural chemical in them. It's called capsaicin. This makes chili seem hot. Receptors in your mouth can sense capsaicin. They also sense high temperatures. Then they send danger signals to your brain. These receptors, for example, alert your brain that a piece of pizza is too hot to eat. The capsaicin in most chilies is safe, but the receptors react as if the chilies were hot. Your brain interprets these signals to mean you're being burned. That's why you feel pain. Now, read the paragraph in the instruction panel and decide whether you think it's a good example of a summary based on everything you've learned. Follow the directions in the instruction panel to complete the written activity. Be sure to click Submit when you are done. So, what did you decide? The summary starts out strong. It mentions the chemical called capsaicin that makes chili pepper seem hot. It also explains that receptors in our mouths sense capsaicin. Those seem like important ideas to me. But then the summary goes off track. The writer includes an opinion, I don't like spicy foods, but I do like pizza. Remember, a good summary does not include your opinion. The summary also says, you can find the best pizza in Italy. That's another opinion, and there is no information about Italy in the passage. Now that you've learned how to fix some common problems in summarizing, in this second written activity, you will write your own brief summary of the passage. Remember to include only the main idea and essential supporting details from the text, and be sure to use your own words. Follow the directions in the instruction panel to complete the written activity. Be sure to click Submit when you are done.
How did that go? Did you write a strong summary? Let's look at mine together. Chili peppers or chilies contain a chemical called capsaicin. That chemical is what makes chilies seem hot. Receptors in our mouths can sense capsaicin. These receptors send danger signals to the brain when food is too hot. When the receptors sense capsaicin, they send similar danger signals. What do you notice? First of all, my summary is shorter than the passage and contains only the most important ideas and keywords. I left out the detail about the pizza because it was used as an example and therefore it didn't seem essential to me. Your summary probably looked a little different from mine and that's okay. As long as your summary is short and focused and contains only essential ideas from the passage. Well, that was your introduction to summarizing. I think you're ready now to try some activities on your own. Take your time and good luck.